Hey guys, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, I've been really excited to make this video. You know, I have a lot of stuff on my channel and I have a big series of T-Mobile home internet, Verizon home internet stuff on there. And this is a big release that T-Mobile has done with a second 5G home internet gateway. They still have the Nokia one out there and they're shipping some of this to people, but everyone's interested, is this one better or is this one better? You know, there are pros and cons of each. So I'm gonna go through all of that for you here in this video. And of course, if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel, like the video down below, stay tuned. I'm gonna do a lot more stuff here with this new gateway. I'm going to tear it apart. I'm gonna install external antennas. I'm gonna use a waveform antenna kit on this and we're gonna see just how big of an improvement I can get out of my speeds with that and how best to use one of those antenna kits, how you aim it, how you set it up, all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for more videos coming out soon. So I just got the new T-Mobile gateway in. This is the second gen of the 5G. So this is an Acadian KVD21 gateway and they're not easy to get right now. Uh, some people are getting them when they sign up for new ones. Some people claim they've been able to upgrade by calling in um, and other people say they uh, are not upgrading. I uh, struck out the first time that I tried to upgrade so I have now a extra new um, Nokia one. So now I right now I have three different T-Mobile home internet lines. It's the price I pay to do this content for you guys. I'm not sponsored by T-Mobile. I gotta fight with them just like you guys do. And now when I got this one, I talked, I had to, I talked to the sales people, but then they uh, routed me on a three-way call to the technical support people. And the technical support person tried to uh, not beg me, but basically tell me that I do not want this new one. And there's a couple of reasons why, and I'll go into that. Uh, with you right here. So let me open this up. We'll show you the setup of this new one We'll talk about what features it has. We'll go into the web interface and the app and see what settings it has and You know, I've been using this 5g Nokia one for over a year and I had the 4g ASCII little white gateway prior to that so I've had the T-Mobile home internet for not quite a year and a half now and um Hopefully we'll see what this one does, see if it's better or worse, and uh, if you should get it or not. All right, so there's not a whole lot in here. You have this gateway here, which is both a modem and a router. And then you have a power cord with a little wall warped, and you have a quick start guide here. And it basically says, um, to start, put it by a window near a power outlet and says ideally on the upper floor if possible. You plug it in, the SIM card's already installed. I already got an email after it was delivered. I think they looked for maybe the delivered confirmation because it happened like maybe an hour after it got delivered that I got an email from T-Mobile saying that this line was activated. And if you don't get that email and your device doesn't work, it's probably worth a call to the tech support to say, hey, I got my device. I did not get an email that said it was activated. So uh, that's something you can call and do. It says power it up and then it has a QR code for you to scan, which basically just goes to the T-Mobile home internet app, which is different than the T-Mobile regular app. And then this other one is terms and conditions and then safety packet where it just tells you that uh, 5G causes uh, cancer and makes aliens come and COVID and stuff like that come. All right, so the power cord is the AC wall plug on one side and then it's a USB-C on the other side. If we look here and see how many amps it is, it is 1.2 amps at the 120 volt. And so that's a, a five volt conversion down to three amps. So it's 15 watts that it, uh, it puts out. All right, actually I take it back. It actually does multiple voltages. It does the five volt at three amps, but it also does nine volts at three amps and then it does 15 volts at three amps as well. So it's up to 45 watts. Okay, and so looking at this here on the back of this gateway, it actually says it takes the 15 volts input at three amps or so 45 watts. But um, if we look here at this gateway, we can see we have a screen on the front. We have some venting on the back and side. Now I'll, I'll get into this and um, open it up and stuff later as well as do external antennas. But um, if we look at the backside, they have a little piece of tape 
over this little rubber door. That's for the SIM card. And then there's two Ethernet ports. And then you have the power port for that USB-C and then a data one. So this is um, different than the Nokia one in that the Nokia one only gives a power, but this one supposedly does data. So that means we could potentially do some kind of, um, you know, network attached storage or something like that. I'll have to play with that and see if I can get that to work or not. So let's plug her in and see what she does. All right, so I plugged it in and now you can see the little T uh, logo is coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my phone and get that home internet app going. All right, so now it's been about a minute and it tells me here on the screen to just download the uh, T-Mobile Home Internet app. And it says you can learn more there. And then I turned on my Wi-Fi here and I see this T-Mobile um, SSID, which I don't, you know, I haven't recognized that one before because I have a different one actually on this, uh, this Nokia one. And then on the back side here, it has a Wi-Fi name and then it has a Wi-Fi password. And it is interesting because it is words with periods in between them. They're trying to make it easier though because it's actually words, it's not just a gibberish. Yeah, <laughs> the end of mine is duh. All right. I'm gonna tell it not to auto reconnect because I like to be on my mesh network as well. All right, so I'm connected to it. And now I open up this home internet app and hopefully it's telling me. All right, so it's not the best sign because it's telling me that it can't figure out my connection. All right, this might actually be one of the errors that I've seen before or that I talked to tech support about. I asked them specifically what problems they're having. They said they're having lots of problems with this Acadian gateway. And a couple of it is it drops the signal uh, repeatedly. The other one is some people are not able to log into it. And here I didn't even try to log in. I just, you know, I was connected to it. it's Wi-Fi. I opened up the app and it's telling me there's a, an issue with the administrator password. What the tech support told me was it appears that you know the password is randomly generated and if it has any spaces in it it appears that there's a bug in the system and it will not work so even though that is the correct password it will not take it you can't log in and you can't get it activated and i asked her what do you do to fix that and she said we're just replacing it with a, another unit so you send this one back and they send you a new one now i also asked uh, some more details about problems and when they're going to be fixed she said it would take about two weeks or so before they release a firmware update so beginning of february time frame is what she's saying that the engineering team says really wait before you order this uh, but let's go through here and see what this says anyways all right so i'm going to try All right, so I'm just gonna go through this setup here. All right, so now it's gonna tell me to do the QR code. All right, so I'm not gonna update anything. We'll keep it the same. Okay. And good, it, it gave me confirmation on the screen that it corrected. And then the interesting thing is right now it says my connection is good. If I go up to my older Nokia one, right now it has two bars of service. And it typically has two bars down here on the 4G and then three bars on the 5G. So let's, um, and the Nokia is very sensitive to where you place it. So it gets worse signal right here than it does up there. But let me go in here and see if we can get some more um information about these cell metrics okay good so this the app still shows you cell cell metrics so that's really good so you can see on my lte so what i should probably do is pull up 
my signal quality over here doesn't give me a band. That's kind of interesting. Okay, well, let me do a quick speed test here for fun. I can hear it making a little bit of noise. It's very faint, but. All right, so not crazy fast, but to be fair, that Nokia one is very sensitive to where I put it, so I'm gonna have to make sure I'm fair with this guy and put it back um, in a good place. All right, so let's see what happens if I put it there, just what it's doing now. What's well, interesting is that it's not telling you what bands that you're on on this, um, this Arcadian. All right, so even worse speeds there. Let me see. So that's staying fairly consistent. Okay, so as you can see, I am right on top of each other there. And um, if I go in here on my computer, I'm connected to the Nokia one. And on my phone, I'm connected to the Arcadian one. So if I look here at the metrics for uh, 4G LTE, my RSRP on the Nokia is minus 112 and it's minus 110 here. Uh, just went to minus 109. And then the signal to noise is both four for them. And then if I compare the RSSI to both of them on this one, it is 96. But on this one, it is 76. So that's a big difference there. That that one's getting 76, and the newer one is getting uh, 97 now, actually. So that's um, probably going to hurt. That's interesting that it's uh, that much weaker. So now on the 5G one, that would be the secondary signal. On here, I get an RSRP of minus 92. But on here, it's minus 88. And being more positive is the best. So the minus 88 is a better number than the minus 92. And then signal to noise on here is a 1.5, which is not the best. That means I'm getting a lot of interference and it could be because I have them stacked on top of each other. So let me, let me turn them off one at a time and, and just compare them without having them both on. All right, so while I have it down here, let me just go ahead and this is not a touch screen like the other one is. It has buttons here. And so if I look at these buttons, I can scroll through here and see devices connected, my messages, which is zero, and then my language. And that's the only settings that you have on here other than um, the selection buttons. If you had a message, I think you could open it and then delete it or something on there if you had, but not a whole lot on here, but I assume it gives you warning, error messages, that kind of stuff as well, just like the Nokia one. And uh, I guess I like it better on the, the front than the top because one, I have a fan on top of that one. And then um, the other thing is I have to stand up to, to see that one. This is easier to, to stand on. So, yeah, you can hear a little bit of noise going on. I'm gonna take this apart and I'm going to install external antennas on it as well as look at some other stuff. I saw a fan on there in the, um, in the breakdown pictures from the FCC filing. So I'm curious to see if that fan is always on or if it only kicks on uh, certain times when it's hot. But let me bring this up to my third floor and that's where I get the best speed. It looks like down here, at least with them both on, it actually gets um, the same upload but worse download. So let me um, see if that's interference based or if it's actually a little bit more biased towards different bands. All right, so I know the lighting is not the best in here. So this is up on the third floor, like a little loft, and right behind the camera is the attic space. So this is above the second floor. And this is where I found I get the best signal. This is where I can get N41 at my house, whereas downstairs I get N71. N71 is extended 5G, N41 band is the 5G ultra capacity, so it's um, much faster. You can see here I get three out of five bars. Sometimes it shows four out of, out of five right here. 
and then this one is showing two out of five sometimes it shows three out of five so at least on the little displays it's showing this one has a better signal but what you'll know is the bars don't really matter it really hardly at all it's really about what bands you're connected to that's really the key um, difference to to worry about and so if you if i have five bars of n71 but two bars of n41 n41 is probably still going to be faster so the issue i was running into just a second ago was all right so now i'm i'm on n41 here and uh, this guy was being stuck on n71 so i had to restart it a couple times to get it to go there but when i run a speed test on there let me share my screen here again all right so i'm going to use this um this app that a viewer actually recommended to me and i'm, I'm connected through ethernet the reason for that is the um, Wi-Fi on my phone cuts out when I open this app up and when I have multiple Wi-Fi's going it won't reconnect to the same one so I'm doing just the um, straight Ethernet so I can get uh, testing done but I'll also test the Wi-Fi coverage and speed of these two devices next all right so in this one you can see I got 140 down 18 up and my ping the way that this app does it is showing you both an upload ping and a download ping and then it's showing you a min and a max of those values. So you can see um, the, the pings there, you can go into detail, you can kind of see how the graph goes on it uh, as far as, you know, both of them, at least on this time, were constantly kind of increasing throughout that time. I got 140 down and a little over 18 up, which is uh, about typical upload. I get closer to 250, really, I have in the past, uh, overnight late hours is right now it's not that late it's only nine o'clock so maybe that's why but this app gives you all kind of other things as well so let me go to uh, fast.com as well and just see what it's doing here because this one also gives you that loaded pin you can see down there and you know that's not that great it's counting up on n71 I've seen actually now my worst one I've seen is like 2.2 seconds of loaded ping which is outrageous uh, but typically it is actually around like 800 milliseconds to a second. So it's really poor for me on N71. On N41, which I'm on right now, it's typically it's low, as low as 100 milliseconds for loaded. But this one's a little bit poor at uh, 384 milliseconds. And then we'll see my upload is fairly similar. So fast.com is typically slower for me. It uses Netflix servers and... Um, you know, versus speedtest.net, it seems to be slower to me. So anyways, this one looks like it's about uh, 10, yeah, 11 megabits per second for upload. So let me switch over to this guy. Still showing three bars here. Let me wait for it to get, okay, it's got an address now. So I'll go ahead and restart this test. And then we'll go over to the app and just see what the app also reports. So right now it's looking very similar. You know, it's a little bit slower there on um, the download and you know, it varies. You saw it a couple times as 110, 120. Uh, so sometimes I just kind of wonder what fast.com picks when it's fluctuating around. You don't get to see a nice graph to see how bumpy it is. Upload slightly faster right now, but more or less here, I would say um, they're the same. All right, so now we'll use this app and we will run that one to see how it goes. It looks very, very similar so far with the pings. And we'll see, so the download's a little bit slower. I think what we were 140. Yeah, we were, we were 140 before and now we were 117. So a little bit slower for both download and upload and you can see this one, it actually was higher for upload and then it dropped down later. And then the download was more of a steady rise up and stay versus the previous one that kind of kept um, kept rising. So, you know, I, I've done lots of tests on these. In general, I would say this Nokia one has been slightly faster, uh, namely in the download speeds. 
versus this one in the same spot. So the that's the upside of this guy. The downside is that this one's much more sensitive to placement. If all right, well, you know, you can see a little bit of sensitivity up here in the attic. I've seen less sensitivity. And then the thing is because the uh, the signal is actually a little bit cleaner. I'm about a mile away from the tower, so I you know I don't have the best set up and um, then I got a lot of trees in between me and it but I am going to do a external antenna install with a waveform so I'm going to put that on uh, this guy and just see how much I can improve it and um, and also I'll show you guys step by step how to take that apart and do that all right so for a quick comparison of Wi-Fi here I am on um, the opposite corner of my house and it's a 2,500 square foot footprint. I'm on the same floor. And you can see the T-Mobile, the two red ones. Those are my two different um, new gateways. The F288 is the Nokia. And the 0D44 is the Arcadian. So you can see a couple things here. One is the Nokia is about 5 dB better. I don't know why it goes away every once in a while. There it goes. Um, I think maybe it's the app that's doing that, but the um, T-Mobile Nokia one is a little bit stronger. And then the other thing you can see is the uh, the bandwidth uh, megahertz is different between those two. Okay, so now again, this is the 5 gigahertz spectrum, and you can see it's a little bit of a closer race there. And obviously they're, they're worse signal because you're further away. So previously it was the 2.4 gigahertz, which travels further. And uh, again, though, you can see the Nokia one does went out slightly. All right, so here we are at the login for this Arcadian gateway. And it's the same address, the 192.168.12.1. And it brings you here to the home page. And guess what? Uh, that's almost all there is. For all the complaining that we've done about the Nokia not having a lot of settings, uh, they really outdid themselves and they've actually given us less information so far. Now, the rumor is they're going to release firmware updates that give more options here. And the tech support lady told me it was going to be beginning of February before that would start to be ready. But uh, here you can see my firmware version is 1.00.12. And the U user interface version is 1.5.2. So... That's what I'm at, at least. And then here we can log in with the administrator password, which is this convoluted number here. All right, so I logged in, and at first it doesn't really show anything, but if you click now manage the Wi-Fi network, now you do actually get a new page, and that's uh, you know slash networks versus slash home. And then here, this is actually a really good uh, setting that I like because a lot of people don't understand how the Wi-Fi network works when it's a it's called band steering but there's only one SSID but in reality there's lots and lots of channels out there that these devices have and some of them are 2.4 gigahertz some are uh, 5 gigahertz and some are really kind of closer to 6 gigahertz but here you can click separate networks and now it's going to automatically add a ending that is 2.4 or 5 to better define what those two networks are because some devices that are only 2.4 gigahertz capable they get confused with the band steering and they don't connect even though there is a available 2.4 gigahertz band so I have a video on that for the Nokia because there is not an option to do this on that one and this one automatically does that for you and I'm assuming yes it puts the same password in there for both of them so it would just be SSID change so I think that's a good setting they have but that's all there is available here so hopefully they release some more stuff but if you're wondering if there's going to be port forwarding or bridge mode the answer is probably no never uh, is my guess for for this T-Mobile stuff they might open up a little bit uh, of things but one of the issues with CG NAT is you really can't ever get a direct connection from the outside internet to your device directly because the T-Mobile network is its own sub-network. So that's not going to happen, but hopefully they can give us a little bit more control over DHCP and 
maybe some firewall settings um, to just help out with our ability to, to do things. And right now on this one, you can't turn off the Wi-Fi. So, you know, like I said, the only thing you can do on this one is change the network, the Wi-Fi network name, separate them out, and look at your, uh, your setup here with what your signal is, but it doesn't even give you the option to do the cell metrics, which are so handy on the user interface so you can see what your primary and secondary bands were and your cell metrics. So the good news is you can do that with your phone app still, like I just showed you guys, but the user interface here right now is pretty much worthless other than if you want to flip uh, your 2.4 and 5 gigahertz to separate bands.